Hello and welcome everyone to another one of my sound design videos. But this time I don't wanna just dictate what's a cool way to make music. Actually, I never want to do that. I always want to emphasize on how all of my options are just various ways to accomplish a task next to the million other ways to do that. But anyway, I will play some jumps now, dry and wet. And you tell me in the comments which one you like more initially. So this was a dry and wet compare side by side. Now I will do the same again, but and and disable the effects on the fly. Maybe that also gives a different kind of impression for a being. <laughs> I don't just want to show you the effect chain, like use this effect chain, but more like I want to explain the ideas that led to that effect chain, if that makes sense. So first of all, it's not just a chain, it's a parallel setup and we will disable two of the parallel layers because it all started with a simple idea. I wanted to have the drums running through a cabinet sim. In this case, I used Cabinetron because in the last video, I already checked out Cabinetron a little bit and I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into it. I didn't do anything special here though. I just selected two of the default impulse responses. It sounded kind of cool on those drums, changed them a little bit with these settings and interpolated between them until I found a point that I liked. It's a cool workflow. I really like it. And yeah, that was the sound and it sounds like this. Now, I do like the sound when Cabinetron is enabled more than when it's disabled because it has kind of a specific vibe and it's not just here are the samples kind of laid on top of the rest of the project but they have kind of a lo-fi vibe that is just nice that's my idea but there is one problem about this it eats a lot of high end and also the low end lost all of its boominess it was definitely too boomy at first but yeah we do want to bring these kind of things back right so I have this second layer where I have Pro MB as a multiband expander as well as a time shift module which I use to only shift it by a few samples. Let's actually solo the drums before playing them back because at this point it gets important to listen closely. So here we have the drums with and without this layer. As you can hear, it kinda chokes all of the right symbols and all that stuff and only gets triggered by the kick and the snare because those are the loudest parts of the drums because I have set the threshold to be right at the edge of the kick and the snare. When you turn up the ratio as much as you can and the knee down as much as you can, you just get a very precise gate. Then also not too much attack, a lot of look ahead so that it doesn't eat the transient and release time is actually the only parameter that should be moved a little bit by feeling to find the sweet spot where it still lets through some of the body of the sound but not too much because if you do it too much then you will hear that it's kind of nasty together with the convoluted signal that comes out of Cabinetron because you know if I disable this now you will hear that there is a lot of phasing going on. Actually, it's not too bad, I think. That's just because of the time shift. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, let's add another time shift module. You can get very, very many different flavors just by moving this layer around by a few samples. Ok, 
Okay, at this point it gets kind of unreasonable, but you know, you could basically between 0 and 20, you got a lot of different flavors that actually made sense. And yeah, I just decided for 14. And yeah, that's kind of cool. You can kind of select some sort of phasing pattern that is not too bad or that actually sounds beneficial in the context of the music and only dial it in sometimes with the expander to make it not overshadow the cool flavor that you got out of the cabinet simulator. But... The thing about multiband expanders like this is you need to use look ahead and some attack so that it doesn't fade in with distortion. You could also add oversampling to minimize these effects, but I feel like what I did was already enough to make it sound good. So let's not get too pedantic about that. Uh, anyway, I wanted to try what kind of difference it would make to also add a transient shaper. So I chose Kilohertz transient shaper because it is my favorite transient shaper. It sounds like this. So first of all, this is one of my favorite kilohertz transient shaper kind of settings where I just dial in attack completely, dial in pump completely and dial down sustain completely so that it's really just letting through the initial transient and everything else is blocked because that's the perfect setting for these kind of parallel layers because then you can tweak the speed parameter to get the transient to just the right length. Let me show you. Yeah, in this case, I just chose the shortest length of a transient that is possible and just dialed in very quiet in the background. But you can hear the difference when I mute and unmute it. And you can hear that it's just a much more direct sound than you can get from a multi-band expander or even a single band expander because expanders in general are not transient shapers. And yeah, I used the time shift module here as well, but on a different value because I found that for these extremely short transients, there was another phasing pattern that I enjoyed in the context of these drums. And that way you can really reshape the sound of the drums, no matter how cheap the drums sounded when you went into that, because you know, the drums themselves, just come from a really old school drum computer. So they are really not that special. And you can kind of hear that, but once you have all of these layers of different trends in shaping, it is this. which makes it just much more three-dimensional in my opinion and makes space for the other elements in the mix. Let me know if you found this helpful or if you have any other ideas that I should try to go into this direction or if this you know, gives you any ideas that you want to share with me or anything. Maybe an idea for a follow-up video, maybe something else than transient shapers and expanders but with the same goal in mind to kind of compensate for convolvers making things sound very samey. Yeah, and this is the end of the video.